Hi everyone. A bunch of atheists will be gathering this year at something called Reason Rally 2012. I really hope they play this video at Reason Rally 2012. I don't really think they will, but hey, maybe some of the people in attendance will have seen this video and maybe reflect on some of the words that I'm about to utter and realize how silly Reason Rally 2012 is. You know, atheists champion themselves as the pinnacle of reason. They want to educate the world and tell everyone, hey, we want you to come over to our atheistic, materialistic, naturalistic worldview that says only physical things exist, and all of those things which exist are physical and obey the laws of physics. And there is no violation in the law of physics, because that would be a miracle, and we don't believe in miracles or anything that sounds like that, and we certainly don't believe in God. And now, we want you to think exactly the same way, and if you don't, you're stupid and dumb. In fact, you're not just stupid and dumb, you're dangerous. You're dangerous because you're indoctrinating your children. You are thwarting the progress of society. You are creating dogmas which cause wars, and you're going to destroy the human species altogether. You're just going to ruin everything. In fact, religion's the most evil thing in the world, and we hate it, and we hate everyone who's religious, and we... on and on it goes. That's, that's really their attitude. And if I've misrepresented your attitude, then maybe you need to tell Richard Dawkins to calm down a little, because I think that's pretty much what I'm getting from him, at least... That's, that's what I, I think. Anyways, and so, there are some glaring problems with the atheist worldview that need to be addressed. And most atheists don't seem to want to deal with this. I don't know why. I suspect maybe it's because they really don't want to know about the God that they actually know exists. But, I digress. The atheist who stands under the umbrella of reason. The one who says, you know what? I'm being reasonable is actually confessing to a few things. They're first confessing that reality is intelligible. It can be made sense of. And why is that? Why can reality be made sense of? Is it because the human brain is somehow sensible enough to make sense of an insensible reality? Well, no, no, no. Reality first has to be sensible in order for the human brain to make sense of it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to be made sense of. And what that shows is that logic and reason are not dependent on the human mind, they're not contingent upon the human brain or thought, and they're not merely human conventions. The laws of logic that govern reality, such as mathematical principles or the law of non-contradiction, these things, these things were actually in existence before we got here. We only, I suppose, discovered them, we use them, we rely upon them, and yet we don't define them. We stand under them, and we acknowledge them. And yet we also acknowledge a few things about them, such as they're universal. You know, 1 plus 1 equals 2 over here and over here. How about that? And it doesn't seem to change. It's immutable and unchanging, and it's immaterial. I don't see these mathematical principles. I can apply them to the world, but I would never say, Ha-ha, I've got 1 plus 1 equals 2. It's right here. And if I destroy it, well, 1 plus 1 will no longer equal 2 anymore. No, no, no. That, that law applies everywhere. And it's unchanging, and it's immaterial. Now, how do we account for universal, unchanging, immaterial, logical principles? Now, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, and I can make sense of them because I believe in a universal, unchanging, immaterial, logical God. And if we have to somehow ignore that, or put it aside, or disbelieve that, it occurs to me that physical objects, you know, a rock is neither logical or intelligent, or reasonable, and yet I can reason about the rock. The rock is intelligible to me, and yet we've already discussed that the laws of logic, which I'm applying to perceive and make sense of the rock within a greater logical context, are not reliant upon me. I'm relying rather upon those laws which allow me to do so. And so, Reason Rally 2012? A bunch of atheists coming together and acknowledging reasonable, rational, pr rational principles that are in effect in reality? Well, really, what's that? that's a celebration of the existence of God. Now, 
unconsciously, of course, they, they'd never admit to that. Rather, they're celebrating their own ability to use, to utilize these principles, and yet they need to give an account for them, which they never want to do, because in order to do that, you suddenly have to believe in God, and they don't want that. And this is why the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they claim themselves to be, you know, the very pioneers of this new logical movement. They're the ones who discovered this great truth about reality, materialism and atheism. And yet at the same time, in so doing, they're actually acknowledging, inadvertently, the existence of God on which these logical principles find their foundation. And thus, the great irony. And so, Reason Rally 2012 is a celebration of the existence of God, whether they acknowledge it or not. And, uh, and that's cool, I guess. And, you know, that's why the Bible says everyone knows God exists, but it's the fool who has said in his heart there is no God. Now, the Bible is not engaging in name-calling. They're fools, not because they're stupid. You know, stupid is a stupid does. You can't blame a dog for not understanding the laws of physics. He's a dog. He's stupid. No big deal. A human being should recognize the existence of God and is held accountable to do so, because they do so every moment of every day. Every logical thought you have is an acknowledgement of the existence of God. And yet people, as the Bible says, suppress the knowledge of the truth in unrighteousness. These people are evil. They're evil. They want nothing to do with God. They want to disobey Him. They don't like being told what to do, even though what God tells us to do is right. Now, an atheist would, you know, Richard Dawkins goes off on the whole Old Testament thing, saying, this is evil and this is evil. Well, that's actually an acknowledgement of the existence of God, too, because universal, unchanging moral principles by which we can make sense and, you know, make intelligible the laws of morality. If I say you should not murder, I don't mean to say that you shouldn't murder because I'm standing over here, and, hey, if I stand over here, suddenly it's okay. I'm, I'm trying to say that it's a universal principle that you shouldn't do that. And it's not, again, contingent on man, because if it's a convention of man... I can take it and change it because I can manipulate it. It's, it's something up to me. I'm a human being, and so I can change it. And yet, and yet we don't want to say that about morality because then you can justify anything. Anything. And at the same time, you can't say anyone else's moral perspective is wrong. All you can maybe say, at best, is that it's detrimental to progress, human progress, but you'd also have to justify why human progress is a universally unchanging, immaterial value that is somehow applicable to the human race, as if we have some kind of cosmic significance. As a, as a Christian, I can make sense of that. I believe we have a teleological purpose, and that morality is a universal principle which we can all appeal to and recognize. And I believe in the laws of logic, and all these sort of things make sense in a Christian framework, and the atheist appeals to all of these things. He tries to make sense of them in an atheist worldview. You can't, and thus the confusion that we have. And so, Reason Rally 2012 is a celebration of the existence of God. And yet, it's also an offense to him because the whole point is, of course, to disassociate themselves from God, all the while relying on the things that he himself provides, and only he can provide. My last criticism of Reason Rally 2012 is this. If we believe only physical things exist, and everything obeys the laws of physics, and there cannot be a violation in the laws of physics, and I think the laws of physics properly defined, other than, you know, like gravity and thermodynamics and all the nuances, basically cause and effect governed by these things, which I just mentioned. Now, there cannot be a break in the laws of cause and effect. If a water drop goes over a waterfall and there's nothing to stop it, gravity is going to pull it down and it's just following the course. Now, we wouldn't turn to the droplet of water and say, hey, listen, you're being unreasonable. You're being illogical. You shouldn't fall over the waterfall. Don't worry about gravity. Do otherwise. You should have done otherwise. You can't do that when you're dealing with a physical object. And at the same time, if everything's a physical object, so is my brain. And when my brain believes in God because it's hardwired or soft, software inside of it, much like a biological computer, has all these preconditions that led up to this moment, such that the neurons in my brain are firing off such that I believe in God, you can't hold me responsible for that because there's no such thing as me or you. Because the I and the you, to speak of, the consciousness, is itself just a physical object undergoing the chain of cause and effect that led it up to everything it's experiencing, plus evolutionary history, which created the brain, which you use, relying on the laws of physics, which you did not define. And so you can't take credit for your thoughts or your actions or anything, nor can you take responsibility for them. So you actually can't do good or evil, because you actually don't have a choice. Choice is merely an illusion. Because everything you think and do is just a chemical, electrical reaction, 
which you can't control because you are a chemical electrical reaction in an atheist worldview. They don't believe in the soul. And so there is no moral responsibility and there's no logical responsibility because someone who believes in God could not up until that moment have done otherwise. You might be able to change their software by educating them, but again, you'd also have to explain to me why it ultimately matters. Human beings don't have some cosmic value. We have as much value, objectively speaking, as sludge and bacteria. And so it really wouldn't matter if the sun just ate us all up, just burned up the whole thing. What difference does it make? We don't have a purpose other than what we make for ourselves. But, you know, if we have to make a meaning for our lives, that means we didn't have one until we made the meaning, which actually means our lives are meaningless. So atheism is empty and broken and contradictory and hypocritical and all the while acknowledges the existence of God while denying him. So if you're an atheist, you're both illogical, unreasonable, hypocritical, and you're going to hell because you're denying the very God on which you're relying upon. And so I invite you to repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ, God in the flesh who died for your sins. He's willing to forgive you if you'll just come to him and acknowledge him. He, he's readily available, and you've acknowledged him this entire time. And every thought you've ever had is itself an acknowledgement of his existence. And yet, as the Bible says, people suppress the knowledge of the truth. God has openly revealed himself through the creation, through the laws of logic and morality that are all around you. And we're made in the image of God. You should be able to look at your fellow man and say, there's something funny about these creatures walking around. They don't seem like everything else. And they seem aware of this God, this God, whom you're aware of too. Reason Rally 2012, I hope you played this lengthy, but probably potent video, because this is the destruction of your worldview. God bless.